Hello there, how are you? Uh, my subscribers, returning subscribers, new subscribers, welcome to my channel. Um, I'm Black Bright, I broadcast out of the UK and I talk on subjects that, I, that appeal to me and I hope appeal to you. And today I was, well, this evening I thought I would talk about Donald Trump because when people refer to him, they sound so surprised. It's almost like they don't expect him to behave in a certain way. And I'm of the opinion that if you understand him, you'll know exactly why he behaves the way he does. And that is because Donald Trump is a narcissist. Yeah. Yes, it has been said before, but I don't think people quite understand how that uh, plays out in his behavior and his attitude. They don't understand why it's the reason he lacks empathy. Why is the reason he's always looking at, he's always looking for praise? Why he gets touchy if somebody criticizes the slightest little bit of criticism or slightest little bit of negative feedback he flips. It's always why it's also why, because he sees himself as the best thing since sliced bread, and nobody should ch challenge that. Narcissists are control freaks. They have to control everything. And who would have thought when he wrote The Art of the Deal in 1987, he would be cutting the biggest deal in the wide, in this big wide world now, so many years later. But that's what's happened. And in that book, he does say he gets a kick out of making deals. He's just made a deal with OPEC. The big deal that he keeps talking about China. Oh, the biggest deal ever, the biggest deal ever. He's always seeking praise. That is the sign of a narcissist. They always want endorsement. They want adoration. They want praise. They want a pat on the back. They want rewards for all of their hard work. And it's not coming from a sinister place. They genuinely believe they're entitled to have the adoration, they should not have their um, authority question. And as Mike Pence said, his authority is plenary during this emergency. By plenary, that means absolute. Nobody can question it. He doesn't have to get the authority of the governors in this particular situation. And so if he is the most powerful man in the world and you've got the most powerful man in the world who's a narcissist, what are you going to do? If you've got a narcissist as a partner or a narcissist as a, um, as a parent, when you're old enough, you can walk out. If you don't like your narcissist behavior and you're in a relationship, you can leave them behind. But when you have a narcissist ruling the world, what can you do? What do you do? The only thing you can do is placate. If you try to challenge him, he's going to say those little things that even though they seem harmless, like you're disgraceful, you're fake, they're very kind of um, light-hearted words, but they can cut with, they can cut like a knife when they come out of the mouth of Donald Trump. When somebody questioned him about the delays of the testing kit, that's disgraceful. And he didn't say it in a harsh word. He said it quite calmly. You're disgraceful, you know. And then I'll say somebody else is fake or he'll tell somebody something else. And even though he says it in a gentle tone, you know he's not to be messed with. You know you're walking on eggshells. Now, I just wanted to write a few notes because I wanted to get it right what Fauci said, because Dr. Anthony Fauci, he, um, he implied that, although it's true, that had the um, testing kits and everything been out beforehand, it would have saved lives. God, who tell him for us, Cesar? That was like treason to Trump. It's like betrayal. You know, you're giving the people a excuse to criticize me. You're giving them excuse to find fault with me. He cannot have that. 
He cannot be faulted at all. And especially now when you've got elections coming up, he wants to be considered the greatest. Why do you think he's injected? Why do you think he injected 350 billion in the first round and 250 billion in the second round to help small businesses? It's to create that he is the knight in shining armour. And so everybody will look up at him and say, oh, yeah, he's the greatest president in the whole wide world. And he really believes he is. And there are many who believe that he is. But the fact of the matter is, this is like a quick fix. And we know it's just a quick fix to get us through the election so he can, you know, have another four years. I don't think it really matters whether people stay at home. I mean, he wants to get America back on its feet. He wants to get it all working. Notwithstanding, you've got cities where the disease are ramping and people are dropping like flies. As far as he's concerned, there are states where there are no cases. And those states where there are no cases, they can go back to work. But who do those states interact with if the other states are falling apart, especially when you think about New York? So I'm not quite sure if he's thinking it through. I think I think he believes in his mind that if he can curry favour, if he allows those who do not have any cases to go back to work and to travel and do whatever they want, I don't know if those people, those states are all going to be tested for the coronavirus to see if they've had it. I don't know what he plans to do. I know that he um, gave the same amount of money to different states regardless of their population. As a result, it would appear that those with less population ended up with more facilities than those with more population and they ended up with less. So there's a lot to be said for Donald Trump. So you can't kind of hit him too hard because he genuinely believes he is doing his best. Genuinely. He doesn't feel as though he doesn't have empathy. If you told Donald Trump that he doesn't have empathy and he can't understand where government Governor Cuomo is coming from or the poor people are coming from, he would be, oh, you know, I don't know what you're talking about. What do you mean? Of course, you know, the poor, they have to have this and they have to have that and providing their citizens and this and that. Of course, I mean, he wouldn't have a clue on how, you know, on the shoe on the other foot because he hasn't had to live it. And so he, he does have a sense of entitlement. He does believe he's the bee's knees. He does command respect and authority. And God forbid any of those reporters who dare question him. It's almost like, how dare you question him? Who the hell do you think you are? I mean, he'll answer because he's being polite. But, you know, enough is enough. Don't overstep your mark. And that's why I don't understand, because when he said something and they're talking over him, I can feel it coming. And I'm like, gosh, you know, you've got some balls to challenge or even try to override the president. And I can understand they want to make a point and they want to get their answers, but they're not going to get it because he's not going to admit to making any mistakes. He cannot. That's not what he does. He doesn't make mistakes. That's somebody else who makes mistakes. He's not responsible. And so not getting out the testing kits quick enough, that's not his fault. That is WHO, the World Health Organization, who didn't in share information fast enough. If they had shared information quick enough, we could have got the testing done and we could have got everything sorted. That's got nothing to do with me, says Donald Trump. I do. I am not responsible for that. And if anybody is responsible, it's double H O or it's the governors. And you see the way he puts his little hands. That is Donald Trump. So he didn't have. Um, he didn't have an easy upbringing, you know. He went into a boarding school, and you know. So 
some people say that if you've had inconsistency growing up, you learn not to rely on other people. And when you don't rely on other people, it, it makes you a bit insecure that you're not going to get what you need. And so you take what you need growing up. You do not rely on anyone. Because you do not want to be disappointed. And so when narcissists, narcissists come out of that environment of being let down or being perceived as being let down as children, and so they feel as though they cannot rely on anyone because their caregivers were not consistent in love and attention. So say, for example, his mother or his, well, his parents they were giving him love and attention for the first five years and in the second five years. They, they, well, for whatever reason, they didn't give him the same attention. There would have been that little tug and pull. He wouldn't have been having that consistent love and attention. And that's what makes narcissists. Anyway, I wrote down some notes. I want to make sure that I remembered everything. OK, in Trump's book, Art of the Deal, he admits to getting his kicks out of making a deal. He's made a deal with OPEC organization of the petroleum exporting countries a record cut in oil production did this three days ago and it was supposed to be one of the biggest deals you know him he loves it oh the biggest deals the largest deals it's a miracle you know all this exaggerated pomps and stance um, Trump signs a China trade deal, I think that was in January, which included a 200 billion in Chinese purchases of American goods. I mean, are you just going to buy American goods just for the hell of it? Maybe they're going to buy their cars, I don't know. That's a lot of money, 200 billion they're committing to spending on American goods. And 360 billion worth of tariffs imposed on Chinese goods in January. I don't know how he got away with that. But like I said, the thing with Trump and the thing with narcissists is that they are um, skillful in manipulation. They'll manipulate their way through anything. And they don't even realise. Well, it's. I think what's happened is they've learned that manipulation will get you what you want. So they don't see it as um, anything bad. They see it as a necessity. You do this and I'll do that. And, you know, we'll, I'll kind of wangle it a little bit and I'll make it look a bit nicer for you, even though it's really good for me, even though I'm getting something out of it. You know, I'll make it look as though you're benefiting. And they wangle it around these narcissists until they get what they want. After they've made the deal, the other person is like, how did that happen? How did they how did I end up coming up short? And that's how you end up feeling. How do I end up carrying this person? It's a very, very good trait to have, especially in business. And we all know that Trump is first and foremost a business person, an entrepreneur and an economist. He knows his stuff. You can you can cuss him all you like, but he knows his stuff. And the thing is, is that as far as he's concerned, he is cutthroat because cutthroat gets you what you want. I mean, yeah, he's got nothing to lose. One of the, one of the richest men in the world, and he's a bloody he's a bloody president of the United States, and a narcissist. So when you're a narcissist, you don't give a toss about anyone. You really don't. You can appear to care. But there is no empathy. It's like they don't have a soul. They, you know, they play all the parts. They do what they need to do. But it's like a shell. It's like they're, they're like robots. They just do what they need to do to get where they need to get. And they get results most of the time. It's just that it's at the expense of a few broken hearts and a few... Um, some resentment along the way. Okay, so a narcissist, they cannot accept responsibility. That's one of their flaws. Um, they can't accept it for anything they do wrong. They will not accept responsibility. And we know um, when Fortune mentioned that the shutting down of the country could have saved lives, the media ran with it and Trump saw it almost like treason. 
that admission of guilt, betrayal, negligence. I mean, Fauci didn't mean it like that, Dr. Fauci. He didn't mean it in that way. I mean, it was obvious, and even he said it's obvious, that if the country had been proactive, of course they would have saved lives. But Trump would see that as an attack on him, not doing his job properly, not taking the right measures. He doesn't see it away outside of him because anything to do with him, anything he's got to do with is a part, as far as he's concerned, a part of his administration, what he's meant to be doing. And he wants to be seen as doing everything right. Whether he's doing everything right or not, that is not the point. But he must be seen to be doing everything right. And for Dr. Fauci to imply that if he had acted, not even though he didn't say him personally, but he's taking it personally. But for him to have, if he had acted, if Dr. President Trump had acted earlier, been more proactive in obtaining testing equipment and closing down and stuff like that, um, lives would have been saved. Oh, that was the worst thing. And as we know, Trump put, tweeted because he's quite impetuous, because once you criticise Trump, that's it. And the thing is, one, he's a man with a tweet. So once it's gone, it's gone. And people are on it. So you can't even take it back. So fire Fauci and, oh, the media were on that. Fire Fauci. And next thing you know, I don't know, Fauci must have gotten his hands and knees. Please, uh, please. So I didn't mean it like that. I didn't mean to override you. I didn't mean to imply this. I didn't. I can imagine the scenario. Until, you know, all that begging that, you know, narcissists love. They love it when they've got you in a position where you're you're down there. You know, even though he's so qualified and he's an esteemed, Dr. Fauci is an esteemed person. If he can get him down there where he's going, oh, I'm sorry, President. Oh, I didn't mean it that way. Oh, you must have realised I didn't mean it like that. It's the media. They've taken it out of context. Blah, 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 blah. Next thing you know, he's, he's groveled enough. And Trump can say, oh, Dr. Fauci is a great man. He's a wonderful man. He's a fantastic man. But you don't cross a narcissist. Not if you're in the same house. Not if you have to deal with them every day. You don't do it. We, he's like, he's like the head of a household. So he's got us, all us minions, well, not me, I'm not in America. But the thing is, what he does affects the whole world. But he's got all us minions underneath him. And he is the dictator. He tells people what they've got to do. And they have to do it as far as they're concerned. They have to do it. And in an emergency, national emergency, he's even got more license to do what he wants to do. I heard he's going to close down the two cabinets or something. What was he going to close down? What's well, never been done before? I don't know. He's doing. He's closing down something that's never been done before ever, even though they're allowed to do it. Ah, uh, I don't know what I've done. It. Oh, it's so much notes. I don't even know how I keep up. To be honest, I, you know, I surprise myself. You know. But anyway, he closed down something, and I don't know what he closed out. So I'm not going to waste my time looking for that. Anyway, um, what else have we got here? Leading the country does give Trump some responsibility, but in the news conference where the president declared the coronavirus pandemic a national emergency on the 13th of March, Donald Trump says he takes no responsibility for the time lag in making test kits available, but blames it on the governors. And, of course, WHO for not information sharing. Trump can do no wrong, and he genuinely believes that. He must not be criticised. He'll take it badly. Narcissists revel in power, and who can be more powerful than the President of the United States? According to Mike Pence, his authority is plenary during the outbreak, meaning it is absolute. And, I mean, people in the um, room are kind of, um, questioning it but he they were talking specifically about 
the national emergency, even though you know the media, they'll run with it and say, oh, he's been given authority over everything. And, you know, I think um, Cuomo was calling him King Trump and all that kind of stuff. So they did, I mean, Pence did make it specific to the national emergency where he has um, plenary authority. His authority is plenary. And of course, Donald Trump doesn't believe he has to answer to anyone. As far as he's concerned, he's the President of the United States. He doesn't answer to anyone. So um, he, he's really arrived. I mean, considering, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a narcissist dream, isn't it? To control the world. It's only that if that person, that narcissist, doesn't have the people's interests you know, at heart, that is the problem. And with a narcissist, they don't have people's interests at heart. Their interests are at heart. And they may make it look like they have people's interests at heart, but it's only if it can suit them. Whatever they say or whatever they do must benefit them. Otherwise, they're not doing it. So what else have we got here? Um, narcissists have you walking on eggshells. You will notice that his administration, including Fauci, cower around him. The thought of upsetting him is unbearable. Fauci had to quickly amend his statement so he wouldn't get fired, as Trump, Trump tweeted. Um, like I said, you know, if anybody challenges him, they're going to be called disgraceful, fakes. Um, terrible people, not very nice. And the funny thing is, he'll say, you're not a nice person. That is not a nice thing to say. And it's so polite, but it's just so, you know, he means business. I think I prefer to hear him cuts the effing and blinding than to hear that slow, calm, serene, order or instruction to people it's just like mm, 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 don't mess with trump so um donald trump had praised that dr anthony fauci several times during the past few weeks but a phrase placed him in the hands of the media almost had their relationship in tatters fauci had said when pressed you could logically say that if you had a process that was ongoing and you started mitigation earlier, you could have saved lives. Obviously, no one is going to deny that, except for Donald Trump. Donald Trump takes that personally. So Fauci underestimated Donald Trump and blah, blah, blah. Narcissists, narciss, narcissists need to be adored worshipped and praised hence he gloats the cupboard was almost bare until i came along all the shelves were empty he says we're going to have an economy that really comes back quickly he's forgetting about all those people i think he's just looking in that little sector that's rich and well off and thinking oh yeah well and they're not the people who are making the money you know it's people like in New York and all these places where people are dying and dropping like flies that are making the money. And yet he's saying to these people, oh, yeah, you know, before the deadline, you know, before the end of the month, we're going to have you up and running and have businesses up and running. He lives in cuckoo land. How's he going to do that? The thing is, he wants things up and running. He wants things moving and looking in place because elections are coming up. He can't afford to have the country in disarray when elections are... How does that look on him? And the thing with narcissists also, they're always worried about how people view them. That is one of their biggest flaws. You know, they do not want people to have a bad opinion of them. And so they work towards creating the perfect persona, a public view. It doesn't matter what they like in private. The public must see them as being all as being faultless. And so if his country 
is, you know, the economy is going down, people aren't working, people are dropping like flies, and an election's coming up, that's not going to do him, that's not going to fare him well. He has got to get his country in order before election, and a good while before election, because he needs to build up the momentum. This might sound heartless, but it is just the way of a narcissist. He's not a heartless person. They're not heartless people. If they actually believe that this is the way things are. Okay, so um, what else did he gloat about? What it's going to look like is even more than a miracle. And then he says, we're going to do it because we have the greatest people in the world. Yeah, so um, Trump as a narcissist cannot empathise with those cities where thousands of people are dying. Narcissists have no empathy. They cannot accept negative feedback. They do not accept anything other than praise. They have a sense of entitlement. Narcissists are born usually out of inconsistent upbringing where their parents gave love but not in a consistent way, leaving the child to think that they were not reliable. Um, I'm not going to get what I want when I want it, so I'm going to get it myself. Um, they have have great difficulty in self-reflecting, so you can't say to a narcissist, look, um, the way you spoke to me yesterday was unreasonable. Um, or, you know, I think you better think about your attitude or the way you spoke to those reporters. Maybe you cannot advise and they will not take it on you tell donald trump look the way you the way you spoke to that report or what you said about this or this doesn't look right they won't go home and think mm, you know my aides told me this they have a point you know they have a point maybe i should reconsider my behavior maybe i should think this through no, they don't have the ability to self-reflect. They're unable to self-reflect. As far as they're concerned, there's nothing wrong with them. So there's nothing to self-reflect on. Um, what else? They genuinely believe they're doing their best. Um, normally with a narcissist, you can walk away and say, have a nice life. But when the narcissist is the president of the United States, you better suck up and give him praise. If you don't, you're going to feel his wrath. And that's all I've got to say for now. Bye-bye.